how did you find the sharing in the group? Okay. Uh, usually, our experience is people talk a lot. <laughs> yes. Why? Because they are sharing something that is positive, something that uh, was a big experience, something that they want to remember. So, talaga mahaba ang sharing. You know? Mahaba ang sharing. Hindi na natin pupuntahan yan. But, I just want to, to emphasize or how do you make use of this? Okay? Because we don't have uh, time anymore. If you notice, uh, is there anything you notice about the questions? Questions are positive. You know, sometimes in research, uh, the facilitators will tell you, do not put questions that will direct you to the answer. They should be more or less neutral questions. In, in appreciative inquiry, we don't do neutral questions. You know, if you want to, to get positive data, you have to ask positive questions. If you want to get negative data like problems, then you ask questions that are, that will give you the answers, okay? So in appreciative inquiry, the first thing that we want them to do is to talk about their peak experiences. Because when you talk about your peak experience, you are actually talking about uh, an experience that is joyful, an experience that makes you more committed, more excited, more alive, okay? These are the uh, big experiences that we would like them to talk about. That is the first one. Experiences that energize people. You can, you can word the, the uh, questions in your own way, but at the end, we always want them to talk about what they are happy about, their big experiences. Second, what do they value most? This is where you can already see uh, their aspirations. Because what they value most are their aspirations. What they want in their life. You know, what they value about themselves. What they value about being captives. This can give you some clue later on, as their directors and supervisors or whatever. This will give you clue on where you can do some in-service training, what you can emphasize. So that, you know, you strengthen their commitment. You strengthen the joy that they have in bringing the good news. Especially because I realize that for many of you, or for many of your catechists, they are not highly paid. In fact, some, many of them perhaps are only volunteers. And Sister Toti, that even pamasahe, you know? Totoo yun. I had catechists myself. So, you know, uh, it is really very frustrating. And that is why the more uh, we should affirm them, you know, because that is the only way we can make them more committed. That's the only way we can make them more committed by affirming them. So look at the values that they have. Third, you know, the core factors or the core factor that gives life to catechists in your diocese. Let's uh, get some, some answers. What did you find as core factors in your group? Uh, support. Father, say Support of the parish priest. Support of the parish priest. No. What else? The bishop, okay? Affirmation. Ano pa? Ongoing formation. Ongoing formation. Ano pa? Recognition. So, you see, these are the things that later on you want to enhance. So that when you go into the dream states, when you go into the planning stage, 
these are the things that you want to enhance. Okay? Don't take them for granted. This is one of the problems that we encounter in, in uh, diagnostic methodology. We try to focus on the problem and we try to take for granted the strengths. Why? Because people say, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No? So, and, and what, what they are trying to tell us here is that, you know, uh, if they are already doing well, why do you want to enhance it further? No, you should concentrate on what is broken, on what is negative, on what is problematic. An appreciative inquiry tells you, no, that's not the case. You have to emphasize what they are good at. Okay? The thing that is positive. Even, uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, psychology here. You know, when you want somebody to excel, okay, you have to concentrate on what that person is good at. If the person is not very good in something, no matter how you hammer that person, eventually he will rise to another level, but uh, in terms of excellence, no. You look at athletes, what they are good at. Diba? Manny Pacquiao discovered that he is good in boxing. Okay, I do scuba diving. Tatalunin ko si Manny Pacquiao sa scuba diving. Tatalunin niya ako sa boxing. Diba? So, what is it that you want to emphasize? What qualities, what core factors do you want to emphasize? among your cavities. So these are what we call the themes. Okay, I will not talk about the fourth one. So what do you do now? After the initial interviews, like uh, what you did, you try to get the themes. And by the themes, what we mean is, what are the things that are recurring? What are the things that are common? Things that people always talk about. For example, you know, one of the things that I suspect you have is that, you know, uh, even if it's, it's frustrating, you know, the sense of commitment is always there. You know? you, they can identify with that. So that is one of the themes. So in the first part, which is uh, the discovery phase, what you want to do is to em emphasize and understand better what that sense of commitment is. So let's go back to the basis here. By the way, this is the classic, classic uh, definition of appreciative inquiry. It is the process of discovery, first highlighting and understanding the life-giving forces that are within an organization and building upon them to envision and achieve the desired future of the organization. So you are building on what is already there. It is not a pie in the sky. It is already there. But very often, we don't discover it, or we have not discovered it. We have not highlighted it. And we have not tried to understand it. So try to understand, why is it that your capitalists, despite the frustrating conditions that they work in, they are still committed. Try to understand that. What are the factors that actually cause them to be committed? So these are the things that you have to inquire into so that you can enhance it even further. Like for example, you say the, the support of the bishop or the support of the priest. Then you have to enhance that. Okay? If I were you, you can talk privately with the pastor and tell him, Father, your presence is a motivation to them. Okay? Even if we don't give them money, you know, remuneration, but your presence there, say mass for them, being there during the recollection is something that they look forward to. Don't take that for granted. Because sometimes our tendency, as I said, is we take for granted the things that are going well. Now, do a paradigm shift. 
okay? Emphasize the things that are going well. You know, uh, among our employees in the university, sometimes they complain. When I commit a mistake, my boss emphasizes it. He remembers my mistakes. But the good things that I do every day, he never mentions them. Hindi ba? Pero nag-experience ang iba. Pag nagkamali ako, nako, patay ako. No? Pero yung ginagawa ko every day na maayos, hindi niya, hindi niya pinupuna. Isang hinanakit niya na may empleyado. Ngayon, babaguhin natin yan. No? You emphasize the things that are going well. Okay? So, so these are the four uh, cycle of uh, appreciative inquiry. Okay, I will not explain that to you anymore. But, uh, okay, so the first part is the discovery phase. It involves a dil diligent search for what is best in an organization, what people appreciate most in themselves. That is the reason why we say, what do you appreciate most in yourself? What do you value most? Where they felt most alive, most committed, most excited about their organization, naming the life-giving forces of the organization. So the things that should come out of the first phase should actually be the life-giving forces of your organization. Most probably, commitment, faith, okay? So whatever, whatever you find, and you try to highlight that. These are the things of your, of your, uh, of your uh, AI process. Now, the second part, after you discover what the, the things that they value most, the strengths that you have as an organization, the next phase is the dreaming phase. After inquiring into the best of what is, one sets sights on what could be or possibilities. Every organization contains within itself latent possibilities that are like seeds waiting to burst to life. <coughs> so what is this space? <coughs> this space is about what is possible in the future? If this is who we are today, if this is our strength today, what could be the future for us? If we build on what we are strong at today. So again, this is not problem solving. What you are quite, uh, trying to look for here is what you are already strong at. You know, you want to bring it to another level. Okay? You want to bring it to another level. Like for example, if you say, there is uh, one of the core factors I have discovered among my catechists is the sense of commitment. Okay? Now, the next question is, what could be possible if today, they are already committed. What more is possible? What more is possible? If today they are already committed, what do you dream for your catechists? To be holy, okay, you know? No, but uh, that, that is, you have to dream about something that could enhance what they are already doing today. You know? So, holiness, in terms of commitment, you, know, you can also do that. Okay? But it is uh, better if you actually uh, enhance what they are already good at today. What is already existing. This is where sometimes it's very difficult for us to dream. But this is where dreaming is necessary. And in dreaming, we can look at the wishes that we have. And this is where the fourth question here is very important. Fall asleep today, 
and wake up 10 years from today. And you were awarded by the Episcopal Commission on Catechesis and, and uh, Catholic Education. And Father Ernie is there and Bishop Bayari, they will give you an award. So what is written in the award? Okay, what is written in the award about your catechism? What are the three wishes that you have in order to enhance, make them even more alive and make them even more committed to the award? So when you talk about the three wishes, this is where you are talking about dreams and aspiration. Okay? So, when you talk about dreams and aspirations, so you just say, well, we wish we had a catechetical center. Yes, yes. You think bigger than that. You know, because once you get the catechetical center, wala na. You know, perhaps you should think about a better service, a better quality of service for your catechists. More than just physical, physical building and usually when I did this you know in reality when I followed groups mostly what they will dream about is a solution to a problem and I tell them this should not be the case like for example what is your aspiration we wish we had a huge building what is the problem oh, we don't have a building that's a solution to a problem. When we talk about aspirations, we are not talking about a solution to a problem. But what we are talking at or about is how you can enhance a present strength that you have. So it's a little bit more difficult to think about it. That is why it's a paradigm shift. It's a problem solving. So don't go into problem solving, trying to solve your problems. You know, go into what more is possible if my catechists are already like this today. What more is possible? Now, uh, my concern here is that I'm talking above your heads. You know, I'm looking at you and trying to uncolorize uh, <laughs> something funny. <laughs> Medyo mahirap to because of the time limitation. If uh, we had some some more time, you know, I could uh, bring you step by step into the process. And besides, this is an introductory seminar. You know, sometimes uh, our problem is we cannot really go into details because it will take some time. Okay? But anyway, uh, we'll see what we can do. And then on the third phase of the AI process, we call this the de define, uh, design or the dialogue phase. At this stage, the vision, usually drafted by a small group, is brought back to the entire organization so that all the members can see if the defined vision truly represents their aspirations for the organization. This process involves a dialogue at different levels of the organization until a shared vision develops, a shared vision connects people. So what are we talking about here? So from the dreams, once you have the dreams, you try to write the dreams in, you know, in sentences, for example. This is our dream. In some parishes, they have their vision and mission statements. Or in some organizations, they also do that. That is their dream. That is an expression of what they want to achieve in the future. Now, before you even uh, write that down for everybody, you should dialogue about it. You know, one of the strengths of AI is that it is very deeply dialogic. It involves the entire organization. So you start collecting stories from different stakeholders, you know, different strengths and you dialogue with everybody until more or less, you know, the question here in this third phase is you ask them, is this, really, is this really our vision? Is this really our aspiration for our capitalists? Do we agree with it? 
or it's only in the mind of the pastor. Eh, o kaya, it's only in the mind of the director of catechism. But we don't agree with it, you know. There should be a process of dialogue in different levels. Because, now, it will take time. But uh, don't think that is a waste of time because you are actually getting them together in order to agree on something that they will work on. You know, one of the principles of commitment and implementation is to involve people in creating plans. Okay? Now, this is not AI. This is organizational behavior. If you want people to get involved, if you want people to implement plans, you have to consult them. You have to listen to them. They have to have a say in what you are planning. Otherwise, if you sell it only to them because you drafted it, no matter how good it is, you know, you will have difficulty in implementing it. Because they will say, that is the plan of the director. That is not our plan. Yes. <laughs> when I did this in Adamson, we spent almost a year just to do the whole process. Almost a year, you know? And we went to so many people, more than 1,000 people, you know, to different stages of dialogue, etc. But at the end, after we did the plans, etc., and our plan at that time was really very simple. It was that we will bring Adamson to a particular level of accreditation, that it would be autonomous. And our plan was for five years, that in five years' time, the university will be autonomous. And when we started, very few of the departments were accredited. You know, we did not achieve our plan in five years. After five years, we continued planning. And we achieved that within two years. So the five years became seven years. But at the end, everybody was happy. And they said, oh, effective pala. You know, because the aspirations that they had were actually implemented. And the reason for this is because they were involved in the planning process. Even if those who did the plans, you know, at the end were only a small group of people. But there is a way of involving the others. Dialogue. You know? So we had small groups, you know, different departments, and we really uh, took time to talk to them. And we made sure that every time we would talk to them and present the plans, you know, there was always snacks or lunch. <laughs> so they went, you know, so they went. And at the end, after we finished with one page, I declared a no class day. So, oh, masarap pa rin itong AI. Nagkakano class kami. <laughs> so, you know, you have to incentivize them. Otherwise, otherwise, they will not put their hearts into it. And so, when we got our autonomous status, we also <coughs> declared an unclass day. And I, I, I think they were even given a bonus. You know. So they know that if there are some things, extra things that we ask them to do, they know at the end there is something that they look forward to. So that some of them, after some time, would say, Father, there is no need. You know, we are doing it because we love the school. But in the beginning, that is not yet clear. Okay? And I wish that for your catechists later on they will say, Father, even without remuneration, I will do whatever I can. That is an aspiration. Or some of you would like to have more catechists. We 
Is that true? So, now, what is the experience of your catechists? Do they attract other people to be committed? Are they happy? You know? Now, if they hear, ang hirap ng maging katechista, do you think they will attract other people? Even Pope Francis said, you know, if you are not happy, you will not attract vocation. Totoo yun. People are attracted when they find something positive and people are happy. So emphasize those things. Ask yourself, what can make them happy? And it's not always remuneration, you know, that could make people happy. Because sometimes even with remuneration, you know, if there is a lot of conflict, if people are not appearing, okay, they will leave you. Okay? So, this is where uh, you have dialogue in the design phase. Anyway, at the end, there is another uh, example that I will give you. Then, the fourth phase is delivery or destiny. It involves deliberating, deciding, and planning the most appropriate steps to take in order to move the organization from its present situation to its desired ideal. This is the step by which the means, the how-to needed to deliver the goals are addressed. Also, structures to create an appreciative learning culture are established. Here we are talking about the specifics of planning. Now, in some cases, you don't even need to go into detailed planning like who, what, where, when, okay? Perhaps on the local level, on the ground level, you may want to do that. But on a higher level, what is important is you have thrusts, okay? And that is enough. It's up to you. It's up to you. I will give you an example later on if you want to go into further details. In this stage, you need only a small group of people to do the plans because everybody more or less have already agreed on the thrust that you want to achieve like during the year or during the next five years. So it is a small group of people because you cannot involve a room like this Otherwise, you will go nowhere, okay? What you can do is you can involve a small group of people to do the plans, and then once again, you present the plans to your catechists and you dialogue with them about the plans. This is where you listen to them again. So in different levels, there is dialogue from the first phase to the last phase. Don't make a shortcut on dialoguing with them. In every stage, you want them to be committed. You want them to be involved. You want them to have a say in the plan so that during the implementation, they will not be surprised and say, saan ang galing yan? Where did this plan come from? They can say, this is our plan because we had a say in it. Okay, well, these are just possible applications of appreciative inquiry, you know. Uh, I don't need to explain them, but you have them there in your uh, handout, where you can uh, see ongoing or continuing formation of members. And I am happy to, to have uh, received that in the Diocese of Antipolo, they have used in their monthly in-service training for head catechists, they have used appreciative inquiry. And this was uh, given to me by Adora Vitor Bonite. Okay, and I think uh, she's printing. Uh, they are printing a copy, so you can, you can actually have uh, a copy of this. Okay, would you like to say some more about this? how you use AI. In fact, I was surprised when uh, she told me, uh, there is an author here, uh, AI in the Catholic Church. 
And uh, I recognize that author because uh, she interviewed me. And, uh, and uh, Adora said, uh, my name is, is there. No, I don't even remember if I still have that book in my library. But I remember uh, AI in the Catholic Church. Would you like to say something? How, how you use AI? This is just uh, to show you the positive uses of AI or possible uses of AI. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I appreciate the inquiry po. Ang get mari is magkano po ng positibong saloobin para magkaroon ng positibong pag-iisip, positibong salita, at positibong pag-ilos. Bawat tao makita si Kristo sa lahat ng tao, bagay, lugar, at pangyayari. Kasi kapag na-appreciate mo yung isang tao na si Kristo sa katauhan niya, the mere presence of her, o kaya ng him, yung katekista, the fact na nag-volunteer siya, bigyan siya ng halaga. Hanggat maaari, ang mga katekista bigyan ng pagpapahalaga. Yan po. Yan po ang sa amin. Tapos, maging bahagi ng isang pamilya ng Diyos na kung saan, kabilang siya. Kabilang siya. Kaya nga siya nagkatikista para makapag-feel niya ang community. Yun po ang sa amin. Yung sense Kaya, of belongingness. Apo, sense of belongingness para sa amin. Yeah. Tapos hanggat maaari, kung meron man siyang problema, hindi po yung kami ang magsasabi, kundi masalamin sa kanya kung anong kasalukuyan niyang kalalagayan. Yun po ang sa amin. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, uh, you can get a copy of this. And uh, try to see if you know you can do something like this uh, in your own uh, diocese uh, for in-service training or planning or whatever. Okay. Okay. I use this in my community when I was in in uh, Adamson in the Central House, which is our biggest community. We were asked. Uh, by our provincial every year to present a community plan. And so the superior of the house told me, well, since you do some planning, can you, can you facilitate the planning in our community? So I agreed. And this is the process that I followed. I just changed the word community to group. So uh, in the first phase, step one, discovery, I said, the objective is to discover the life-giving factors and strengths of our group and dialogue about them. The guide question, use the interview questionnaire. So I use that questionnaire that I gave you. I just changed some of the words. You know? And then the expected outcomes is A, a list of acknowledged life-giving factors or strengths. Actually, we had a list and then when we dialogue about it, some said, no, hindi naman ito yan. Some said, no, we have to, uh, we agree on this, or some added more. Okay, that is the reason why dialogue is important. Because the group has to acknowledge that this is their strength. Okay, if only one person says it, and the others do not agree, then that is not your strength. It's only the opinion of one person. Okay, so there should be a list of acknowledged life-giving factors and strengths. Then better be cluster this into three or five themes because we decided that we will work only on three or five themes during the year and the next years perhaps. Not on everything because otherwise it is too scattered and we may not have the energy to work on so many. So we chose what strengths do we want to, to uh, magnify, what strengths do we want to highlight. I remember one of them was the value of hospitality because our house here in, in Manila, in San Marcelino, is our, we call it the central house because it is close 
to a lot of transportation. A lot of our priests come from the provinces or abroad, and they want to stay there because they have to get visas, they have to go to embassies, they have to go to the nuncio, etc. So most of them would rather stay here. And because of that, that house has to be always hospitable. And sometimes they complain, nobody's here, nobody's attending to me, etc., etc. Okay, so we said, let's emphasize the value of hospitality as one of the values that we want to work on this year and in the next years. So we agreed on that. I, I forgot the, the other values, but I remember the value of hospitality. Okay. The dialogue about them, are they truly our strengths? How can we develop them further? What factors facilitate their growth and development? Like we said, uh, how do we bring this further? Is it enough just to have rooms for our priests who are coming from uh, provinces? We ended up with assigning one of our priests to be, to be a guest master. Okay? And he was actually given, we said, well, we have, if this is our plan, we have to put uh, our money where our mouth is. Okay? So that guest master said, you know, sometimes I notice uh, they come, they come from the provinces, they are tired, so they rest here and they need transportation. So one of the things that we can do is to offer them transportation in case they need to. Then another one said, you know, uh, I think they should also be brought to a restaurant. So they will not eat this food that we are eating here once in a while, you know, because they eat this also in the provinces. So the guest master was given a budget by the superior of the house. When there is a guest, you know, you can bring that guest out. Okay? Meron ka naman budget. Sabi na iba, pwede ba sumama doon? Ay, masyado naman kayo. So, sinabi yan, isa lang ay sasama mo. Ano? So, you know, but at least our priests who come from the provinces or who come abroad after some time, after they have rested, before they leave again, you know, the guest master invites them. Let's go to a restaurant and eat out. Okay, so that is the meaning of what uh, I was saying. How do you bring this further to another level? So it's not only offering them rooms, it's offering them something more. Okay? If they uh, have a checkup in the hospital, then the guest master will arrange for them to go to San Juan de Dios Hospital. No? Do they need somebody to accompany them? Okay? Because some of them, they need somebody to accompany them. Some of them say, no, uh, just bring me there and that's enough. And when they are hospitalized, the guest master tells us, Father so-and-so is in the hospital, uh, please visit him. So yung mga ganon, small things, you know. But these things show the spirit of hospitality that we want to provide. I don't know whether they are still doing it. You know, this was uh, some years ago when I was still there. Now, in the second step, which is dream, envisioning the future, the objective is to envision the future we want as a group. The question here is taking into consideration what we have found as our strengths, what kind of future do we want to build for our group? You can use here the responses to the last question of the interview questionnaire. This is number four. This is where you have the three wishes the aspirations that you have. Because these aspirations are part of your dreams. Is that clear? Okay. So this is the dream phase. Then, the third step, <clears throat> step three, is 
constructing together the future, the design, to formulate the vision and mission statements and core values of your group. This is the objective. The core values are usually in the form of possibility statements. These can serve as guide or criteria for determining your group plan. These criteria uh, could be values, could be in the form of possibility statements. What is possible? Uh, now, in many groups that have already a vision and a mission, this may not be necessary. But the statements may still be necessary as your parameters for the future. Okay? So the question here is, taking our collective dream as starting point, how do we envision first the vision? A brief statement of what we want to become in the future. Mission, a brief statement of who we see ourselves today. The core values, a set of values based on our strengths that can serve as guide or criteria for our plans and activities. Different groups will do this differently. In some groups that I have facilitated, they ended up with what they call lines of action, particularly in religious communities, lines of action. And that is enough for them. That tells them these are our trusts in the next five years or so. So lines of action. Depending na yan sa inyo. You could say uh, these are the lines of actions for our catechists in the next five years. Okay, like deepening the commitment of our catechists getting more catechists in our diocese. Okay? Getting more support from the lay people for our catechists. Or getting more support from the bishop and the priests for our catechists. Or you might say strengthening the ongoing formation or the in-service training of our catechists. Okay? And then in the last phase, that is where you put something that is measurable. When you say strengthening or deepening the in-service of your catechist, what are you talking about? How do you know at the end that they have deepened or that you have deepened their continuing formation? What are your parameters? What are your proofs? You know, or what they call, how do you know this has happened? Okay, measurable results, as they call them. Now, uh, you know, when we talk about faith, it's very difficult to have measurable results. But it is still possible. It is still possible. Although, as I said, there might be some difficulty in uh, measuring the faith. And the last one, living and sustaining our plans. The objectives is to create a culture in terms of structures and processes to live out and sustain our group plan. And number two, to formulate an action plan for the group. The guide question, what kind of structures and processes do we need to introduce, change, or maintain in order to live our vision, mission, and core values. What is our group plan? One of the things that I do here, uh, in terms of uh, structures and processes that we need to introduce, change, or maintain, there are three questions I usually ask. What is happening now that you are happy about and you would like to preserve and maintain? Number one. Second, what is happening now that you want to change or stop or diminish? And third, what is happening now that you want to bring even further? No, what is, happy, what is that happening now that you want to start? So what you want to start, what you want to maintain, and what you want to stop. 
Because if you want to go to a particular direction, then there are things that you have to stop doing or minimize. There are things that you have to get started. And there are things that you may want to maintain. So these are three basic questions when we talk about strategies and plans. What you want to stop, what you want to start, and what you want to maintain. Now this is where you need to, to discern and make the right decision. And this is also, again, where you have to dialogue with your catechists and with different stakeholders. Because sometimes, being human as they are, okay, if you do something that will hurt them, you know, you might lose them. I know of a lot of lay people in parishes, they are very committed, but the moment the pastor says something against them, they leave.